And here we are with the miniature LED arcade game that runs off of 3 volts or 2 AA batteries. My goal for this project was to build a compact miniature game and of course to build on my soldering skills. The game works by waiting to press the button until only the green LED is lit up. Each time you press the green LED, the game will get faster. If you miss, you lose and the game restarts. The LEDs currently have two random modes. The first one is where the lights come on from the top to the bottom, then they bounce back in descending order. The other mode is once the lights get to the end, it restarts to the first LED to make it more tricky. It took me a while to get the pieces for this project because I ordered the wrong items. I ordered the 74HC165N Parallel N Serial Out Shipped Register instead of the 74 hc 595 serial in parallel out shift register. I ordered them from eBay so it took a couple months to get here only to find out I had the wrong parts. Funny enough they are the exact opposite of what I need for this project. To start off the pieces you will need are one Arduino, I used the ATtiny85, seven LEDs, seven 80 ohm resistors, this depends on the LEDs that you use, one 74HC595N shift register, and not the 74HC165N register, and one push button. You can also get a breadboard, PCB board, or a solderless breadboard. I first started off by getting an idea of how big the board should be. Since I wanted to make this project as small as possible, I went with the long skinny board. I had to crunch all of the components on the board. Once I got all the components in place, I started soldering jumper wires to the components. I ran out of jumper wire so I had to use speaker wire which didn't turn out too well but it still worked. You'll see in the videos that the blue wires are the jumper wires to all of the LEDs and then the black jumper wires are used for the ground wires. I used speaker wire to solder everything else. The soldering took me the longest to do and make sure there is proper ventilation because it is unhealthy to breathe in the fumes. When soldering the ATtiny85 I soldered an adapter that the Arduino sits on top of so I can easily take it out to upload new code and reinsert. A pair of helping hand clips will save a lot of time when soldering. I recommend getting a pair to hold your wires and PCB board for any project. For the code and the detailed wiring diagram, check out my website neha.com. Here you also have access to all my other projects and code such as a portable Guitar Hero game or even a custom made LED drawing board. For the enclosure, I 3D printed two separate boxes. One is for the AA battery pack and the other is for the motherboard enclosure. This project can also run off of a 3 volt cell battery as well, but I figured more people had AA batteries rather than single cell batteries. When aligning the batteries, put them in series to get 3 volts to power the microcontroller and the shift register. I had battery terminals that I soldered then hot glued to the container. From the positive terminal I connected a 1 amp switch that I had on hand and from there I put the wires through the motherboard casing. I made sure to hot glue the wires so they don't move around. And remember there is no such thing as too much hot glue. After the hot glue stage it was time to solder the positive and negative wires to our project. Before soldering, I screwed the two main 3D printed pieces to each other using two small screws. I had to slide the wires through both of the projects, then afterwards it was time to solder and test. Luckily it worked and I didn't have to go back and look through for any soldering errors. Finally, I printed a cylinder that the user presses to reach the button, as well as a button cap for the cylinder. I glued the cylinder to the button then placed a lid over it to test it out. The total print time took around 6 hours for all of the pieces. When I tested it out, it worked perfect. The button presses feel natural and works instantly. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this project. It was the first project I created using a PCB board and it turned out great. It is also a nice refresher for resistors and shift registers. I completed my goal of trying to complete a small handheld game that requires little power to run. Let me know if you try out this project. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.